hey y'all and welcome to the hillbilly chicken ranch i am susan your hostess and today we're going to get into the cleaning hacks 24 open collaboration challenge and this is a challenge for anybody that wants to participate i don't care if you're cleaning tires cleaning motors uh cleaning babies cleaning laundry household cleaning outdoor cleaning it's a cleaning challenge so uh, I want to know your hacks on how you get things done, especially the tough, rough jobs of everyday cleaning that we all have to do. And I suggest everybody create a homemade cleaners book that you can go to. Um, this is a money, for me it's money savings, but some, you know, some recipes call for essential oils, which can be quite expensive but there are other alternatives that you can do to keep from buying those expensive essential oils if you want to now I do buy some essential oils I do use some around my home but I prefer all natural cleaners as much as possible and if you look at any label on any item that you buy from the stores that are for cleaning and you start reading the list and you can't pronounce the words I guarantee you it's not healthy for you or your family but if you clean with that and that's what you want to use in this uh, open collaboration challenge be my guest this is all about us learning from one another so with that said I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the resources that I am using um, years ago I was a single mom on food stamps and I had a very limited amount of money to buy any of the other essentials and so I would buy the soap the laundry soap and all that stuff on a very tight tight budget uh, dish soap and all that this is before I even comprehended that I can make a lot of this stuff my own for myself um, but two products that I always bought with my food stamps and y'all get this you can buy them on food stamps. Baking soda. And vinegar. And of course I had to tape the label back on because the label was coming off. But this is a brand new bottle of vinegar. Now you want at least a 5% vinegar for your cleaning needs. And um, those two items I could clean just about anything in my house with. And so I would use those for my cleaning supplies, for cleaning floors, walls, toilets, bathtubs, fixtures, countertops, everything. Um, I would use those for, except for granite or marble countertops, you do not want to use your vinegar. Some of the books that I am going to be exploring with you that I've picked up at thrift stores, y'all. These are great to pick up if you go to thrift stores and you're looking for books uh, that would be really great. Now this one I did buy online. This was Haley's Hints. Uh, he has all kinds of uh, hints in here about laundry and all kinds of things. So you're looking for things that's going to help you um, with your cleaning needs. He even explains how to Fix your vacuum cleaner if it's not sucking air like it should. It doesn't have that suction that it needs. This book is Green Solutions for the Home. It is uh, by Dr. Miles H. Bader. And it has all kinds of things in it as well. And um, it's not just for inside your house, but it tells you an inexpensive toilet bowl cleaner and other things that you can put together. And um, you're going to find these things really do work. Another book is Bottom Lines Household Magic. This is by Jean Willen and Lydia Willen. I will put a list of these books in the description box below. I'm sure the prices are going to go up on these books if the, the word gets out that we're looking for these. So y'all be on the lookout for them early on. But this book also has things about uh, 
shower heads and different things that you need to clean. Um, those non-slip bathtub appliques. I, I can remember moving into a house and those things were stuck to the tr tub and I did not want to use them. And I tried everything in the world to get them off. It was awful. So there's all kinds of tips and tricks in this book. The Good Housekeeping Complete household handbook the best ways to clean maintain and organize your home um, this has a lot of great helpful tips in here um, and you will find all kinds of good things in this book as well and then the all new uses for everyday things baking soda banana peels baby oil and beyond 1,715 tips for a better home, garden, and life, and it's put out by Reader's Digest. So those are five, bi five books that I have picked up. Four of them I got from thrift stores, and I am looking forward to going through those books and finding tips and uh, cleaning hacks for me to share with you. And we're going to go into the kitchen here in a br brief moment, but one of my tips for baking soda is get you a, a glass jar and this is a Parmesan lid for your baking soda. I keep this in the kitchen. Um, you can keep one in your bathroom, your kitchen, your laundry room, anywhere that you might be using it for a mild abrasive scrubber. And so this is going to be used today in my kitchen. And I've got some pans in there that need a lot of TLC. They've got some burnt on food a little bit and I'm going to show you how I clean them but I've got other dishes in there that I've got to wash too so you're going to see me doing a little bit of dishes so I hope you'll stick around for that and I will be featuring the baking soda y'all in my book I have written out recipes for homemade cleaners I'll be sharing those throughout the year as well and you can always research online to find all natural cleaners and recipes for yourself. But I thought, what better way for us to get kick, get the new year kicked off than with cleaning hacks that we can all learn about and use. So we're going to do homemade cleaners. One of my homemade cleaners is nothing but pure baking soda. I washed my floors for years with vinegar and water so there's a lot of things that you can do a lot of tips and tricks one of the things I do want to tell you before we get into the kitchen is make sure that you know what products you can mix and what products will cause very dangerous gases so um, Clorox and vinegar is one that you will never ever use together so that's another little tip for you one of the first tips I'm going to tell you about are sink strainers. These things save your sinks from so much trash going down in there. Old food and stuff can get clogged in your pipes and that can be very costly for you. So always use sink strainers, especially if you live in a mobile home. Because mobile home pipes are different than pipes that are in regular homes. So you want to be able to strain out everything. And another tip is don't put grease down your drain because it will clog up eventually. Uh, periodically, I will pour boiling hot water through my pipes. I do a lot of canning so that water goes down my pipes and it flushes out all that debris and everything that's in there. But another tip you can use is put baking soda and vinegar in your sink and let it fizz up and then pour hot hot water in there and that will also flush out and clean your pipes so I mean baking soda and vinegar are really my two go-to cleaning agents that I use in my home and they're very safe and natural so what do I have in my sink well I'm going to start I've got two cast iron pots um, that need cleaning and I always always Put hot water in these as soon as I'm through using them and let them sit there and soak. This morning I did not, but because the power went out. We had a brief power outage. So I have this casserole dish 
And yes, I put water in it. But it's got some baked on grime and grease on it. It's just really, really nasty. So I'm going to rearrange my camera so you can see me cleaning this. And then, who, who doesn't get eggs stuck to your spatulas? So that was another thing that I kept out of my cleaning uh, today. I've got some pots that I have got to get cleaned. This one's got some stuck on food in it. And my little drain has already caught debris. So we're going to get this started here in just a moment. All right. Some of the tools that I use on my skillets is this little scrubber by Lodge. They've gotten quite expensive, though. I'll let you know, when I bought this one, I think it was $7.95. They're like $21 and up in some stores now. But that's a really good scrubber to have. Um, the plastic scouring pads are great. Homemade scouring pads are even better and you always want to have a good dish rag available uh, any type of brushes that are small that you can get into crevices is great also so the first thing I'm going to do this has already been wet so I'm just going to take this baking soda and sprinkle it on there and you may have to do this a couple of times but um, and I'm also going to do it on this spatula while we're at it and then you're going to take a little bit of your dish soap whether it's a natural dish soap or otherwise and you're just going to add just a little bit of that there and on your pan you want to have a little bit of soap with that baking soda now this I'm going to use I'm going to move this back for just a moment turn my water on I'm going to use my scrubber first we'll see how it does you want to use really hot water. And I'm going to get all that egg off of this. And I look at there. It just comes right off. Very little scrubbing involved. And then I can just clean that up and rinse it off and it's ready to go. So we're going to look at it after I get done. And I always go around it with my fingers just to make sure I've gotten all the egg off that might be still stuck on there. So there you go. Stuck on egg is no longer stuck on this spatula. Now we're going to move on to this. And you notice I have not put any water in there. I'm just going to take this rag and run it along the outer edge and we have already cleaned most of that burn on stuff off of this bowl. Now I'm going to move on to the inside of this and I'm just going to start scrubbing it with that baking soda and soap mixture. And I've got some on the outside. We'll get to that in a moment. I'm going to leave the rag like it is. We're going to go ahead and rinse this inside and make sure that we've got all that debris out of there. And see, I missed a little bit in the corners. I'm going to go back in here and get this corner. And then I'm going to do the outside. And this takes little to no time at all. And you don't want that water so hot that you can't get your hands under there. But you do want to use hot water because hot water helps to kill bacteria and germs. And so... I have now cleaned that. Can y'all see how clean that is? 
I'm still seeing a little bit of debris here and there. So I'm just going to run it back under again. I always feel inside, especially with my glass pans, because sometimes you can't, sometimes you can't feel how, uh, if there's any debris in there. So that is perfectly clean and ready to use for the next time around. I'm going to set the skillet here. I've got the top to that. I've still got some of that baking soda and stuff on here. So I'm just going to go around this and clean the edges of it and go ahead and get that cleaned up. So this is the lid. This is a vintage piece that I picked up at a thrift store that we use. And I made a meatloaf in it last night. And it turned out really good. So Now I've got this pan in here. I've still got some soap on that rag, but I'm going to add a little bit more soap. And I'm just going to clean the inside of this pot. It's got a little bit of stuck on baked pie potato and I, I'm going to get it all cleaned up including the handle and because it has that baking soda on there the water feels wetter it does a wonderful job of helping that soap to work and I missed a spot in the bottom. We go back and we rinse that off. So baking soda is safe on glass and just about anything kitchen utensil you have. Um, so this is a lid. I'm just going to rinse that off real quick. And I've got other items to wash, but we're going to stop here right now. Okay, I've got my two skillets in here. I'm going to sprinkle them with baking soda. And there's a big contention online about to use dish soap on your cast iron or not. Well, my grandparents were born in the 1800s. My mom and my dad lived through the Great Depression, and I never once saw them not wash a skillet with soap and water. And the reason I do it is because it is more sanitary, but this is going to loosen up all that cooked on stuff that you saw in the skillets. And maybe somebody can get into telling me how to clean the outside of some of my pots and pans because I've got some that we picked up at thrift stores and stuff. And um, they have burnt on stuff on the outside of them. And I have yet to been able, be able to get that cleaned off. But I'm working on it. So this is the first skillet. And it's clean. Now I put these in the oven on 350 degrees for about 10 minutes with the oven on and then I turn it off and it dries them out and then I season them. So into the oven. 350 degrees. Now we're going to move on to the second skillet. And get it cleaned inside and then I work on the outside and the handle now this is skillet we use quite a bit we use this for eggs and I do rinse them with hot hot water and you will see these skillets in just a moment. I'm going to get them dried out. We're going to put our uh, vegetable shortening on them to season them, and they'll be ready for the next go-round. 
use vegetable shortening to season my pans with. And you can see it is dry and clean inside. Dry and clean inside. They just came out of the oven. The pans are still kind of warm. I've got an old t-shirt that I've cut up. And I take some of this on my t-shirt to wipe down the inside of this. You want it thick enough that you're not going to burn your hands. But you're going to season your pan. And so... These will be seasoned and ready for use the next time around, and your food will not stick. And when this gets full of grease, it can go into a, um, you can make a fire starter out of it. You can add it to a pine cone or whatever you want to start a fire with inside in a fireplace or outside in a fire pit. Makes a great fire starter. So you're not wasting anything got you in here I've got a dirty sink so I'm going to start by sprinkling some baking soda in here and then I'm going to add a little bit of dish soap I've got cream of tartar cream of tartar is a whitener so I'm going to use just a little bit of this maybe a quarter teaspoon of this and a little bit of citric acid. Now, citric acid is really good, you know, for canning and other things, but it's also good as a cleaning agent. So we're going to sprinkle that in there as well. And I'm just going to take my dishcloth, and it's foaming down here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's foaming down here, the combination. So I'm just going to start scrubbing my sink and this is um, a really good way to clean your sinks disinfect while you're cleaning you can actually add salt to this if you have some really tough stains and clean down in the drain and clean your your um, drain stopper thingy Clean everything in your sink. And I have really some hard stains in this sink from over the years, but this works really good. You can let it sit for a few minutes and then you rinse it. And I always rinse with hot water. And so anytime I do my dishes or uh, any kind of cooking in my kitchen, I'm going to clean this in place of buying the scrubbers that you would buy in the store, the soft scrub or uh, the barkeeper's friend or whatever it is. And I have cleaned my sink. And after I do that, I take a clean dish towel and I will wipe it down and kind of dry it out a little bit. And so now I have a clean sink to start the rest of my day. And you can do this before bedtime as well. It doesn't cost you much, and it does work wonders on keeping everything clean. So you've learned a few of my secret hacks, cleaning hacks, that I use around my homestead. And I hope that you will try these in your homestead. Prove me wrong. But baking soda and vinegar are the two best cleaning agents you can buy on a budget. And I got my cast iron cleaned, seasoned, and ready for the next use. I cleaned a burn-on mess off of a uh, casserole dish, a glass casserole dish, and the lid. I cleaned up a uh, pan that had some stuck-on food in the bottom. And I cleaned my sink. So you got several different ideas that you can use around your homestead. I hope you were taking notes. If not, you can go back at the beginning and you can see what I did and used. Well, that's all I have for you today, folks. I hope that if you are a collaborator channel out there, 
uh, content creator that you will join in this year-long Cleaning Hack 24 Open Collaboration Challenge. And that's a mouthful to say, but it's hashtag Cleaning Hacks 24. Anders Sand Sign, the Hillbilly Chicken Ranch. You're going to use that in your title and the description box. And there will be a playlist you can add to your description box as well. I'll be looking for these all year long to add them to the playlist. And I hope that everybody gets some benefit out of this. And on December the 30th, we will end this. And somewhere around January the 2nd of 2025, we'll come back with a summary video for you. So everybody, I hope that you're ready to get cleaning in 2024. May you be fully blessed.